Hello, I'm Jay Anderson. I'm a plant pathologist and senior lecturer at Southern Cross University in Lismore. My apologies for not being able to make it to your field day, but I'm in the depths of marking student assignments this week. I'd much rather be there with you. From about 2001 until 2012, I worked for Queensland Department of Agriculture and Fisheries and was involved in studies into diseases of passion fruit and breeding for disease resistance. During that time, base rot was often an issue, and so I've been invited to share some information with you. Noting that we don't have all the answers, and I've not worked on this for a long time, but I will provide what I can and some suggestions for consideration. Today I've been invited to talk about how to control the spread through orchards and discuss if there are some options which are suitable for you to trial. But before I talk about that, I wanted to give you a little bit of a background about the disease base rot and the fungus, Fusarium selenii, just to help your understanding. Fusarium selenii is a fungus which lives in the soil. It can produce long-lived spores in the soil. We know that it affects passion fruit, but we don't know if the Fusarium selenii, which infects passion fruit, also can infect and complete its life cycle on other plants. If it can infect and other plants, they could be a source of spores which can infect passion fruit. On badly affected plants and under humid conditions, the fungus can produce the red spores on stems, like those seen in this photo. We don't know how much disease these spores can cause, but we treat them as if they are a major source of spread of the disease. I'll talk more about Fusarium selenii being a stress pathogen in a moment, but it's important to note there are no resistant varieties and fungicides don't work against this disease. There are more than one species of Fusarium which affect passion fruit. Both are soil born. Fusarium oxysporum, former Specialis passiflore, is very specific to passion fruit. It causes a vascular wilt and the plant does not need to be stressed to become infected. You are unlikely to see Fusarium oxysporum, former Specialis passiflore, in grafted vines or Flavicapa seedlings in commercial passion fruit. This is because the resistance to Fusarium oxysporum, former Specialis passiflore, comes from the Flavicarpa background. We say Fusarium selenii is a stress pathogen because it requires some kind of wound or predisposing factor so that the fungus can invade. When we did trials in the glass house, we could not get it to cause disease simply by putting the fungus in the soil. We needed to wound the roots of the plants or waterlog the soil. Here I have an example from northern New South Wales from about 17 years ago. It was a hot summer with high rainfall and high humidity. A lot of vines collapsed. When we inspected closely, we found Phytophthora spores had splashed above the graft of the vine. The rootstock being resistant to Phytophthora. The Phytophthora infected the scion and allowed the Fusarium selenii to invade. The Fusarium selenii then worked its way down the stem and the plant collapsed. In that case, we advised the grower to pull out the badly affected vines, uh, mulch to prevent soil splash onto the stems of other vines and to keep up a good phos acid program to manage the Phytophthora. Here is a photo of a plant from North Queensland from around the same time. And here is a photo from a root plantation in northern New South Wales from recent years. Both had experienced waterlogging and then a decline. We recommended that badly affected vines be removed to prevent the spread of the disease. This one from the recently from the northern New, New South Wales also had stem boring insects present, but we don't know if they came in after the vines started to decline. So what can you do as growers? If you grow your own rootstock seed, make sure your root systems don't get twisted or get a J root at transplanting. 
We have found this compromises the rootstock and the fungus can get in. Keep your vines healthy by managing nutrition and pests and diseases and making sure water doesn't pool around the vines where possible. Prevent damage to the stems from fertiliser burns, stones being thrown up during slashing, and if possible, use windbreaks to prevent bad uh, rub, wire, wire rub on your vines. For infected vines, if you have mildly affected vines which have a swelling low at the base, but which are not collapsing, you may want to try to mulch around the base to get new root development above the swelling. So up above where it's swelling. However, this may not be worth your time and money uh, if it's going to be very wet. So it may not be a good strategy if the vines then collapse, if you've spent that time and money on mulching. Where you have badly affected vines, you're best to get them cut out as soon as possible, particularly before any red spores form on them. There are no resistant varieties or fungicides which are suitable to use. So growers are looking at ways they can either target the pathogen in the soil or improve soil health. I do not have any experience in passion fruit with these options, so cannot provide specific advice. But if you are thinking of testing something, then leave an untreated section which you can compare it to and take some good notes. Solarization may reduce the population of Fusarium selenae in the soil, but it will also decrease the beneficial microbes in the soil. Apparently some people have had success with analyte. It would need to come into contact with the fusarium, which may be difficult in an orchard setting. And it will also take out potentially beneficial microbes. Biofumigants have been successful against fusarium in other crops, but note that for the full biofumigant effect, the fumigant plants need to be worked into the soil at a specific stage and moisture content. And working the soil is obviously difficult in between trellises. Using crop rotations in amongst trellises is also difficult. And as we do not know the full host range of Fusarium selenae, so we may be introducing other host plants. However, I see spelling the blocks between plantings with a range of cover crops may be good and help improve the soil health, structure and general suppressiveness against disease. So this could be a good option for testing. If you want more in-depth advice on improving the soil health on your farm and how to go about testing methods or products that, to see if they'll work for you, then this book is very useful. To find it, Google Sterling Hayden Soil Health that's Sterling Hayden Soil Health, and it will come up. And no, I do not actually get a kickback for recommending this book if you're wondering. So in summary, there's still a lot we don't know about Fusarium selenae, but in the meantime, if you see badly affected vines, remove them as they could become a source of spores to infect uninfected vines. If you grow your own rootstocks or your own seedling plants, Make sure roots have a good structure and are not bent up. Manage irrigation and drainage as best you can to not put the plants under undue stress. Similarly, manage your nutrition and pests and diseases as best as possible to keep the plants healthy. If you do experiment with something, set aside a couple of plots which are similar and treat one and not the other and take good notes on what you did and what happens. And hopefully you'll find something which works for you. Most of what I've presented here today was from my time at Queensland Department of Agriculture and Fisheries, and that was on Horticulture Australia Limited slash Hort Innovation Funded Projects, PF04001 and PF07001, which were supported by your levies. With additional new information obtained while I've been working for Southern Cross University. I'd like to also acknowledge the passion fruit growers who've shared their knowledge with me over the years and Ken Pegg and the Fruit Pathology team, and more recently, Kathy Grice and Kayleen Bransgrove from DAFQ.